Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lil Brunson back at you at the back at you, and I am the best reporting on the Eagles. <clears throat> Listen, so me and Philly 500, we decided how we we're going to do the draft board actually a few minutes ago. So what's going to happen is on my videos, you're going to see like a small 30 second, 45 second clip or something like that. A Philly 500 electing somebody to the draft board. And I'll do the same. I'll send Philly 500 some videos um, over guys, um, one, one player at a time throughout the course of the next two weeks of guys that I'm going to select to our draft board. And um, at, at the end of it, when we get about 20 players, we're going to come together on a joint video and we're going to discuss the picks and the guys that we picked up for our draft board. So um, <clears throat> without further ado, um, this is Philly 500 pick. Yo, LB, how you doing? King Thing back here, and you know, LB, I'm super excited about this draft and the prospects just like you. And when I think about what prospects the Eagles should target and who they should target, the first guy that I think of is a guy who has everything the Eagles need this offseason. Speed, youth, and playmaking ability. And this is a guy that I could see so clear in my mind playing for the Eagles that when I close my eyes, I see him. I see them calling him Green Lightning. I see them saying, this dude is fast. And the guy I'm talking about is Henry Ruggs III. This is the first guy I would put on my list. At six foot, 190 pounds, ran a 4.25 at his junior pro day. This is the guy I have to go with. This would be, at this point, the guy I go with. Uh, even if you were to keep a guy like Alshon Jeffrey, Henry Ruggs III would fit right in. He would provide insurance for Deshaun Jackson, and he would give you an element that Alshon does not have, and that's speed. So the first guy I have have to put on this list Henry Ruggs the third so that was Philly 500 pick for this week um make for, for this video uh make sure you keep your um, your eyes glued to his channel and my channel to see who we both picking uh make sure you leave your comments in the description so um uh, press Taylor <sighs> press Taylor let me think press Taylor he was a quality control guy moved up the quarterback coach and now he's interviewing for the Office of Coordinator vacancy that we have with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, shout out to my guy, Isaac the Barber, before we get to chatting, man. You know, he hooked me up real nice and proper yesterday. Um, yeah, that way. So, you know what I mean? Press Taylor, um, I'm not... I don't know what to say about this, man. You know, at some point, you got to give somebody a chance. But this is the real danger of hiring somebody like Press Taylor. First, you got to evaluate what they did in the, in the former position that they were in. You were the quarterback's coach. What were you telling Carson Wentz about keeping two hands on the ball because he had entirely too many fumbles last season? I mean, that's plagued his entire career. So being as though you were upgraded to the quarterback coach after Flip left, um, Carson Wentz had these fumbling issues. Your main thing should have been helping Carson Wentz to improve there. Um, he hasn't improved in that area. Um, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles, and mind you, Carson Wentz wants to keep this guy around. It's no mystery to me why Carson Wentz would want to keep this guy around. I don't I, I don't think he's hard on him enough. Obviously, he's still fumbling. And you, you need you need a quarterback coach that's going to be able to hold the entire quarterback room accountable. You need that, man. So if this dude can't do that, and if this dude he got he has this relationship with these guys, they're already vouching for him to get this job. I don't think it's the right hire. We need somebody that nobody don't know nothing about. Nobody don't owe nobody nothing. You know what I'm saying? Nobody ain't rub nobody back. You just come here to do a, do a job for your coach, for your supervisor. A quarterback coach, you're the supervisor of the quarterbacks. We just need somebody who understand that concept. The Philadelphia Eagles, um, you, you know, I think you're running into a situation to where nobody might not want to come. You don't want to not give, you don't want to not offer the opportunity to the quarterback coach. But the quarterback coach, if he's going to be an offensive coordinator, he got to change up some things, man. You can't be buddy, buddy. You can't be buddy, buddy. And the fact that, you know, you, you know, press tell him, man, he's done some great things for the organization, man. I'm not going to hold you. You know, the guy who, you know, who, who sculpted an architect, you know, was the architect behind the Philly special. You know what I mean? So I got great respect for his, for his, um, his vision and his, um, his, his play diagnosis. Um, I, I would like to see what he can do as far as calling plays are concerned, because it's one thing to be able to design plays, but you got to be able to call them. You got to be able to call them. So you don't know. It's probably a bunch of good plays in our playbook. 
there's probably a lot of good plays in our playbook, but at the same time, it's one man that's calling the plays. And calling plays as an offensive coordinator is a situational thing. So if guys can't get in tune and understand that, you know, we're in this situation, so this is the package of plays you need to be looking at, then I don't even want them to come aboard as an offensive coordinator. In all actuality, does it even matter who the offensive coordinator is if Doug Peterson is not willing to relinquish not willing to relinquish his um, play call and responsibilities. I don't think it really matters at the end of the day. So I don't agree with this. I don't even agree with this dude getting an interview because he's already um, kind of in bed with the organization, which is not always a bad thing. But you were the quarterback coach for a quarterback who had a severe fumbling problem. And I look at that as a red flag already. You ain't holding him accountable for that. We, are, we know he's a high draft pick. We know he's Carson's, Carson Wentz. But we know he's still got some developing to do. And as the quarterback coach for Carson Wentz, I need a quarterback that's going to be able to step in and say, "Listen, you need to. You, you, I, I need. I need this. Carson Wentz need to be running. He, this dude, Press Teller, is 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 held for his film watching abilities. Why is that? Why hasn't he sat Carson Wentz down and made him watch film on guys like Russell Wilson and guys like Carson Carson Palmer of pass who hold on to the ball extremely well with two hands? You know what I'm saying? Um. I don't know about this, man, but let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. And the Philadelphia 76ers, we playing the Boston tonight, man. You know, Boston is always a rivalry for us, man. At the end of the day, I don't like what I saw at the Philadelphia 76ers in their last game. It, it, was, it was disturbing. Just, just, the, the, just Joel, Joel and B, just to me, Joel and B looks out of shape. Joel and B looks out of shape. We all know the story with, with Ben Simmons not taking no threes. Joel, Joel O.B. just looks, he, he looked out of shape. And I think that was his first game back since his hand surgery. So come on, you know, you, 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 you know, you know, things take time to heal. Um, it's a problem in Philadelphia with, with a lot of the coaches. I feel like not taking accountability, man. I'm not saying that Doug got some accountability that he needed to take. Obviously, he's the head coach, but a lot of the uh, guys that work for Doug need to take some accountability. And I think Brent Brown need to take some accountability. Uh, we know Ben Simmons got a lot of great points in his game for Ben Simmons to not be attempting threes and helping break down some of his own coverage is really hurting the team. It's hurting the team a lot, man. But um, you 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 know the the Philadelphia 76ers are way too talented to be a six seed, man. Too talented to be a six seed. If the Philadelphia 76ers want any chance of going deep into the postseason, they got to get a number one, number two seed. They got to get home field home court advantage. They got to look to do things like that. You know what I mean? But let me know what you guys think in the situation with this press teller. Uh, let me know what you guys think with the, uh, the, the the Philadelphia 76ers. And also, man, let's do a little bit. Of, let's talk about the Super Bowl, man. That's actually tomorrow. I don't know if I'll be able to get a video in tomorrow. Most likely I will. I will recap the Super Bowl. That's a big deal. Um, I think, like like I said, I'm, I'm still going with the Chiefs. I think as this game gets closer, it gets darker for the 49ers. I think the 49ers walking it, going to walk into a situation to where they get blown out. The 49ers could be blown out in this game. If the 49ers are blown out in this game, then Patrick Mahomes catapults himself into just this is a category of his own in terms of, you know, quarterbacks that's still around. Because you're looking at quarterbacks that's phasing out. Drew Brees, I don't even think he knows when he's going to return. Aaron Rodgers is definitely declining. Tom Brady is definitely declining. Um... The Dallas Cowboys, in my opinion, made a mistake in not re-signing Dak Prescott because if Patrick Mahomes wins this Super Bowl, he's getting extended next summer. Patrick Mahomes is not only going to reset the market and the value for quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes is going to take a knife and put it through the heart of the market. Patrick Mahomes will get probably over $200 million as a quarterback. He's going to hit 200 mil. I think he'll get over 200 mil. He's going to get the biggest contract in the history of the NFL, period. That's what's going to happen. And it's going to be a bad news for a lot of guys who didn't lock their guys up. Like the Rams and um, the Philadelphia Eagles, they locked their guys up. You know what I mean? And I think that was a good job for them to do it right now because I think things are about to hit the fan as far as the quarterback market is concerned. I just think that the um, the Chiefs are able to stop the run, and that's going to force Garoppolo to have to throw the ball. Um, they didn't make Garoppolo throw the ball in the NFC Championship game. 
Um, the, the Packers are soft. You know what I mean? I didn't expect them to make Garoppolo do anything and make him uncomfortable, but the Chiefs going to make him uncomfortable. The Chiefs were able to slow down Derrick Henry. They're going to be able to slow down any, any running backs that the uh, 49ers going to be able to throw at him. So we, we're going to know the Honey Badger is going to be stuck to uh, Kittle like white on rice. I think it's going to be an amazing game. Let's start there. But if somebody is to be blown out in this game, it's going to be the 49ers. You know what I mean? I got, I got, the, I got the Chiefs winning this game plus 10. Um, I think Andy Reid finally gets his just due and, um, you know, cements himself in history, man. Let me know what you think in the comments.